It's another day in fishing paradise. I continue my adventure on the Pacific coast of Guatemala at the beautiful Pacific Fins Resort. So far, the people of Estapa have shown me how tightly knit their religion and culture are, while all centered around fishing. The sailfish bite here is second to none, and I'm looking forward to learning about why it's so good. And finally, through conservation and regulation, I begin to understand and realize the impact and value this ecosystem has on the prosperity of the Guatemalan people. Uncharted Waters with Peter Miller is presented by Salt Life. In Estapa, fishing is a large commodity. There are a bunch of fish markets that open as early as 6 a.m. The market exudes positive energy. There's nothing but laughter and happiness. I even got welcomed in with a song. As a kid, I always loved going to fish markets. I studied every detail, color, weight, fin placement, and I was amazed by the hustle and bustle. Buenos dias. Oh, look at that. You got red, red snapper? El pago. Ro a pago? Pago rojo. Everyone has something different to offer. Never caught one of those. Robalo. In, uh, in, 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 in English, snook. Even the little ones. That's a nice one. You ever put it on your arm like this and let it walk? It's my friend. They were a little shy at first, but such cute kids. I had to hook them up with a little swag. You're welcome. And of course, I tried to take a good selfie. <laughs> I got this guy laughing now. Oh, uh, I got you. Let me see that sucker. They slap, slap, slap. High five. Oh, mierda. <laughs> Something I knew I wouldn't be catching were the delicious giant shrimp called langostinos. How many guys do I have in my crew? I got one, two, three, four, I got five. Uh, one, two, three, four, four five, five, five personas. I think 30, 30. Oh, look at those. Those look great. Oh, I don't know about that guy. He's up. Yeah, yeah. Mi familia is gonna be muy alegre. Muy alegre. Yeah, they be like, wow. He brings food finally. Muy alegre. Gracias. The great thing about Guatemala is that they accept the U.S. dollar, so you don't have to exchange currency if you don't want to. The snow cone jingle called everyone's attention. I gotta get some of that, I'm thirsty. Un pequeño para mí. Oh, good. Muchas gracias, man. Every morning at Pacific Fins starts right. Great coffee, a fresh glass of OJ, a hearty breakfast, and last but not least, a sailfish made from fresh melon. What do you think they're going to be uh, fishing for today? We'll look for tuna. It's uh -huh. a little far away, that's why you have to go early. Okay. Yeah. The weather's perfect. Yeah, the weather is. Look at all this room on the boat. Today's mission, to catch and release as many sailfish as possible, and hopefully get into some delicious mahi and yellowfin tuna for me and the crew. Captain Jimmy has us on course about 35 miles out in hopes of getting into the sailfish bite right away. There he is, I'm on tight. Jimmy, you parked on him. You put the boat right on him. First baits in the water, a double header sail. They're swimming together, they're friends. He's got this one here, look at this guy. Woo! Mine's wagging right here. Nice, coming up again. I love 
drunk today. <laughs> This guy's working me hard. Being true to the conservation efforts put forth by Inguat and the fisheries department, this crew wastes no time in releasing these sails. Nice fish. It's a great feeling to know that this fish was unharmed and will live to fight another day. Nice job, man. Come on, man. First one, second one, first one, second one. Woo! That was awesome. Good job, Jimmy. Uncharted Waters with Peter Miller is presented by Salt Life. Live salty. Fishing chaos. Fish smarter, not harder. Low T Center. Reinventing men's health care. Salt Life sunglasses. See clearly. We ran 35 miles offshore and literally parked on the fish. We hooked up with a double header the second we deployed the baits. It was pure adrenaline. This is exciting, very exciting. He's right here on this short. Oh my lanta. Oh, that's what I love. There he is, way out there. A lot of sailfish here today. Coming up. Coming up again. Within the course of an hour, we caught and released nice. 10 sails. The bite was epic, to say the least. And that's when Captain Jimmy said, you know what? It's time to break out the fly rod, because the bite is on fire right now. Fish on fly. Oh my god, this is too good. I haven't done this in 28 years. That takes teamwork, man. Good job. Only because I'm fishing with the best out here, right? When you use this type of tackle, you have to wind really quickly, and you've got to try to protect your knuckles because the reel has no anti-reverse. They call it the knuckle breaker, he's jumping. You also have to employ a lot of hand-eye coordination. It's so cool to get tight on a sailfish, but to do it on fly, it's even more rewarding. About to get the leader on this. When that red touches the tip, I got a sail on fly. Woo! I got a sail on fly. Look at the fly in his mouth, dude. That is so sick. I'm pumped, man. Getting the fly now. Man, what a day. I lost count of sailfish in the teens, and now to get a sail on fly is just, yeah, sick. Very cool, man. Thank you. That's too easy. You make it too easy. Excellent. I mean, come on. Nice job. Thank you, man. Estapa has one of the highest sailfish catch rates in the world, and no one understands this better than Dr. Nelson Earhart, a professor at the University of Miami, focusing on marine ecosystem research. Tell me about this location. What makes fishing out of Estapa and Pacific fins so good? It is a mechanism. It's a biological mechanism being driven by physics. The ocean circulation here brings water from the depth into the surface upwelling, and that is very low in dissolved oxygen, and then accumulates the prey of the billfish at the surface. Okay. That leads the flow of water against the coast. Therefore, pockets of high oxygen are brought with it, and those are the unique volumes of water that are available for the prey to survive. So what you're saying is the bait gets inside the higher oxygen level. It's because the only place that they can live. They are trapped. So it's like fishing out of a fishbowl. That here. is exactly the concept in the sense that this is a big ball of fish. <laughs> this is, is several miles in diameter. <laughs>
seems like the fish here, obviously they're up on the surface quite a bit. They're not diving down. The Eastern Pacific is known to have very low levels of the oxygen at very shallow depth. Here, for example, at this time of the year, animals can no dive uh, below 40 meters. When we release them, you have to release them healthy, and sure. that's why they put low pressure on the fish, because if you exhaust one of these fish, they, will they may just sink past 120 feet and it's over. Knowing this information, captains instruct their anglers to catch and release their sailfish as quickly as possible as not to exhaust the sailfish, ensuring a healthy release. It's great for not only for, for everybody fishing, but for the economy. The society itself, it will grow in terms of quality of life. Correct. One fish alive is worth over a thousand dollars while a fish that is dead brought to shore for the market is, is less than fifty dollars. Fifty dollars for a sailfish. Yeah. But a live sailfish release is roughly worth a thousand dollars. Several times. Mercury. Go boldly. Yeti. Built for the wild. Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Bubba Blade the ultimate sportsman's knife. The Pacific Fins crew and I continue our stellar day of fishing in the calm Pacific waters off the Guatemalan coast. Now, our target species are mahi-mahi and yellowfin tuna. We're hoping to spot the large pods of spinner dolphin which hold big concentrations of tuna on their perimeter. We got Niles Miller in the house, catching a mahi in Guatemala. My son is currently studying at USC in LA. Until this moment, he's been behind the scenes, working on the production of the show. But now, he's on set, ready to fight fish, alongside his very proud dad. Nice. That's a nice one, Niles. Yes. Nice one, man. Woo! Niles Miller's on the board. Once we got into the mahi-mahi, it just kept getting better and better. We got twins. Oh! As a fisherman, you always need to be ready to react quickly. It's a game of inches. Every second counts. That's called high impact fishing. Because of their vibrant coloring, high speed runs, acrobatic jumps, it's easy to see why mahi are so much fun to target. This guy was hanging out with his two girlfriends. Decided to have a little ballyhoo uh, bonanza, and they ate him. So now I'm gonna grab one of the females and show you the head difference. You see the female head is rounded off, and the male head is squared off. So we got the male and the female. With all these mahi in the boat, a sailfish on fly, I consider this a phenomenal fishing day. But just as I was thinking that, the right long popped out and it was a monster mahi. Oh man, this is a backbreaker. This is the big boy. Look at the size of this fish, guys. 35 pounds. Whoa! In the age of social media, it's always nice to have great photos of your adventures. One, so you two. know, you're gonna find this exact photo on my Instagram page, at Uncharted Waters with Peter Miller. That's a slammer. Look at the size of his head. We're using live bonita for bait. And you can see their mouths aren't that big. So it's pretty remarkable that he swallowed that because it was about a six pound fish. As we turn the boat towards home, lunch is served. Fresh grilled mahi. And simultaneously, we are greeted by thousands of spinner dolphin showing off their moves. As much as we're in awe of their synchronized launches and spins, we knew that it was time to go after the elephant tuna. Tuna stay close to these pods, picking up the scraps left behind by the spinner dolphin. Three tunas with the spinners jumping all into us. This is like Jurassic Park. <laughs> Look at them, man, this is unbelievable. Guatemalan yellowfin coming in. Even though they're not trophy sized by any means, it's rare for me to have the opportunity to catch this specific tuna, one of my favorite eating fish. Oh my God, we're gonna have some sashimi. This is the best day ever. You see this? Yes. Yes. So now 
we got to keep up with the dolphin. Come on. Double header. When you're in a pot of dolphin catching tuna, you need to bring them in fast in order to stay with the tuna, which shadow the dolphin. Yellowfin tuna. Got bats. Hey, Niles. You want to come catch a tuna? They're all over the place, dude. We're on the perimeter right now. We should get a bite any second. There it is. You're going to get a bite in a second. All right. Doubled up. That couldn't have been coordinated any better. <laughs> Switch holders. Hey, Niles, first yellowfin tuna. Woo! That's a chunky monkey. Good job, man. Ridiculous. Good job, Captain. Way to go. The Maverick strikes again. People ask me all the time if I eat raw fish. So, here's your answer. There's nothing better than fresh yellowfin tuna straight out of the ocean. NTB, Tire Kingdom, that's all you need. Pacific Fins, Guatemala, Resort and Marina. Padre Azul, Super Premium Tequila. Life can be fantastic. Yellowfin, your legacy. Today, I set forth on an adventure. It's one of those things in life you never really plan for. The opportunity arises, and you go for it. Guatemala is known for its vast amount of volcanoes. They complement the surrounding mountains and flatlands, creating a beautiful landscape. Bienvenidos al Volcán Pacaya. Hey, there they are. Hey, Steven and Peter. Jimmy. Nice to meet you, Peter. Glendy. Glendy, nice to meet you. These are all young students that certify themselves to safely take guests up to the base of the volcano. Before starting the trek, I got to meet my travel companion. This is for you. This is Principe. <laughs> the other horses had their own funny names. Penguin. Muñeco. Uh-huh. Princess. Oh, look at Princess. Eddie. <laughs> yeah, Eddie. How long do we uh, take to go up? Going up, maybe one hour. One, two, three. three. These horses have to be strong, huh? Yeah. From the entrance of the National Park, we start the 2.5 kilometer climb. How about this temperature up here? 72 degrees. No humidity. Did you ever think you'd be on, on horseback walking up the side of a volcano? in Guatemala. <laughs> Never really crossed my mind. Me neither, me neither. These horses know the trail so well that they pretty much navigate themselves. We finally make it to the grandiose Pacaya volcano. Its first eruption dates back 23,000 years. Our guide explains that this is one of the world's most active volcanoes and how it has affected the people that have made this their home. Pacaya is a number one active volcano in Guatemala. Guatemala has 37 volcanoes, only three is active. You can see the black, mm -hmm. these are the 2014 river de lava going down, going down for three hours. Only destroyed plantation that avocado and coffee. We continued our journey to the base of the volcano, where the lava from 2014 has created a field of steaming rock. Look at all the, the steam, the vapors, starting to feel the heat now. Welcome to Volcano Pacaya, okay? This is the rock spot. Mm -hmm. okay, feel that now. Is that Without falling in. <laughs> okay, for you. We're gonna roast some marshmallows on the volcano, huh? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, gracias. So we put it right down the bottom here? Yes, two minutes in total of this wood. <laughs> if you look really closely, you know when you hear that puffing sound? If you look very closely, you see the rock shooting up. I don't know how many meters in the air. I never thought a million years would be roasted marshmallows. Right at the volcano. Yeah, in the steam coming up from the earth 
And it's kind of cool up here, so it's kind of like sitting by the fire. Mmm. Is that the best marshmallow you've ever had at a volcano? Definitely number one out of one. Mmm. <laughs> I like the pink center. It's like a cotton candy Tootsie Roll. The fact that we're sitting here on the side of the volcano in volcanic ash, roasting marshmallows, it's, it's, it's incredible. Mother Nature, man, at her finest. I like it here, man. I like Guatemala. No, for sure. Well, unbelievable trip. It's unreal. This beach is absolutely beautiful. So now that we've been to Guatemala, where are you thinking about going next? Honestly, I think we could go anywhere. The world is our oyster and I'm ready to go. So anytime you want to come with me, man, that you got a ticket, but you may have to work. Ah, damn. <laughs> ah, I'm kidding, that's all right. For additional content and social media, please visit us at unchartedwaterstv.com.